him in. He's just completely, utterly in awe here. That is a complete scandal. That is right out of this world. Welcome to my office, the glass court. It's very gladiatorial. When you walk on to, to a glass court for your match, you know that it's you versus your opponent. That is it, one on one. If you look up, that's one of the things I think a lot of amateurs, when they come onto a glass court, is that one of the first things they say is they can't believe how bright the lights are. If the ball goes up in the lights and you haven't played on the glass court much, like the first year when I played, I always found it quite difficult because as soon as you put the ball up there, there's a lot of lights, it's quite bright. You can see it going through the through the lights. It's quite difficult to then volley, and you're sort of guessing a little bit. You know, first year on tour was a real struggle. That was one of the things I struggled with, balls in the lights. But nowadays, I think a lot of the guys still pluck the ball out from up there and stick it in the nick. A lot of the people think, oh, you can't really see out of the side walls and what have you, but you definitely can. I mean, it's, it's very clear. You still obviously see Rami just sort of like lying down that's why you see the photographers like Steve Lyon, etc., wearing all black with his black hat on, um, just so that you know, with the whiteboard and stuff, it's um, it's clear, and he's trying to be as inconspicuous as possible, which is is good for us. Like when people move across, especially across the front wall, it's quite hard, you know, to pick up the ball because your eye naturally gets drawn to something else which is near you. So like my eyes sort of occasionally drawn to the guy smiling really weirdly at me. Even subconsciously, even though I'm concentrating on the ball, one little movement there can suddenly draw my eye away from the ball to then see what that movement is. So the floor, as you can see, this floor is actually a really good floor. I really like this one. Um, the wood floor that the sweat tends to tends to sort of not sit on top of it. As soon as you sort of go like that, it tends to just spread the sweat out into the into the wood, and then you can carry on. You know, as you're lunging and moving so fast, it only takes one bit of sweat or one, one sort of slip and you can, you can injure yourself quite badly. So the court is actually set up above the floor a little bit. So if you see here, there's, there's a gap. Obviously, if I put my racket down here, you can see there's probably that much where the court sprung. For us old guys, our hips and knees, etc., get a little bit of protection. A lot of the time when you jump, you can sort of see the, the floor give a little bit. I think for a lot of the guys, they tend to not pull up as stiff as they might do on a plaster court. So I think it's a good contrast with the white ball. I think it's quite clear to sort of pick it up. Do you know what, actually, some, some courts are put together better than others. I know that sounds ridiculous, but there are times when the panels aren't quite flush and there can be different, different spots where the ball might just shoot out. But on a glass court, if you hit a good one, it tends to glue and it depends what spin you put on the ball but say you've got that type of spin where the ball's just wanting to cling to the side wall then it sort of runs down and it just doesn't want to go away from the wall so it's constantly going into it you know it only needs to come out that much for us to be able to get the racket to get strings on it rather than to get frame on it it is literally that much to be able to and we can hit decent you know you can hit as a pro you can hit decent shots off center on a normal court the ball tends to bounce up off the walls a little bit more but you can see I'm having to bend quite low to get the ball out the back corner you have to really hit through it as soon as the ball hits the side wall it takes a lot of the pace off as soon as you hit through it though and and low the ball sits down right in the corner one of the other differences obviously on a glass court if you hit a good good length you end up having to boast it out uh, on a traditional court, a lot of the time you can give yourself a little bit of space and then with a little flick of the racket, you can get the ball straight and deep enough. Whereas on a glass court, it's quite tough to do that. And it, see, like that's a classic example. You didn't hit that too bad, but as soon as it hits the side wall, it just takes all the pace off the ball. The ball sits in the corner straight away. As soon as it hits the glass, it just drops a little bit quicker than a plaster court. Then as soon as you get on it, you can really hit decent volley drop that really puts your opponent under pressure. And the ball stays really short. I mean, look at, you can see how low it stays. Whereas on a plaster court, a lot of the time, the ball will bounce to a, to, to a position that is, you know, level with the top of the tin. So at least you can then, someone's gonna come on it and hit hard. Hit hard across or hit, hit hard straight. Whereas on the glass court, the ball tends to stay just a bit lower. So therefore to try and attack, 
you're hitting from a position which is below the level of the tin. So therefore, it's really hard to hit a, you know, an attacking shot when someone's hit a decent drop. So most of the time you're having to lift, you're having to hit under the ball to make sure that it obviously goes above the tin to then get yourself back in play. The ball tends to react a bit livelier off a plaster wall than it does on a glass. It tends to be a bit deader. And the ball goes down as well off the side wall there. And the thing is, if you're using the cut and you're using slice, rather than just hitting flat where the ball sort of, it doesn't have any reaction to it. If you're hitting a bit with a bit of cut as well, the ball's sort of even more with the spin on it, staying shorter, shorter, shorter. And that's all you want is the ball to stay as short as possible. And because it, it makes the court as long as possible for someone else. If, if you've hit a short a shot to the back that stays in the corner, the back, suddenly you're making the court, you know, an extra step longer each way than a plaster court. It's one more step to the back, but then it's also one more step to the front. And if you keep doing that over a period of time, even for the fittest guys, some of the fittest guys on the planet, it takes its toll over, you know, if you're playing for an hour, an hour and a half, and you're doing one extra step in every shot, one extra step, one extra step, uh, it adds up.